during various interactions uh, with business leaders, often the word uh, political leadership has uh, been played out. So what I want to do in this is uh, talk a little about political leadership and specifically in context of profiling one of the greatest political leaders of our time that I have um, ever uh, read about is Lee Kuan Yew. He was the creator of the Singapore as we see today of course working with his team with his leadership team and being able to create a magic out of an island where nothing existed. So um, his journey is an amazing one and I think there is uh, not much difference between political leadership as well as business leadership if one tries to understand it in the context of Lee Kuan Yew. Singapore as a country got independence in 1965. It was a British um, naval base and from there it became and British stopped spending there so they were declared independent. Not that there was a big freedom struggle or anything. Now let's try to see, understand this country in 1965 how it was. You see the ethnic diversity. It was it wasn't one united country as such. They had Malays, they had Chinese, they had Indians and were they going hand in hand? Not at all. There, there were major issues between them as well. If you see neighboring nations, were they all helpful ones? No. At that point of time, Malaysia and China, the two big neighbors, were absolutely dominant and every possible uh, uh, nation thought that Singapore wouldn't be able to survive by itself and they will ultimately be dependent on Malaysia or uh, China. So what was their condition of the armed forces? Non-existent. Totally dominated by uh, Malaysian, so that armed forces, so that actually threatened the very existence of this nation. And we all know Singapore is a very, very small country compared to any of these neighbors that we have listed above. What about labor? Their labor was disorganized. Their labor was um, um, low in skill. And their labor was highly unionized. All the problems that we can think of. Per capita income, absolutely low lesser than dollar three hundred at that point of time and if you look at uh, the social indicators of health and welfare and all obviously it was low now when we profile this nation in the year 2000 or even if you look at the profile of this nation now what you'll see is that the ethnic diversity there is a concept of Singaporean which has been established and Singapore um, has been um, accepted as the first world nation amongst the southeast in the southeast countries um, neighbors it has developed uh, it is it has it is a leader in high tech and it's it's uh, developed a huge uh, competitive edge above its neighbors it is not a low cost it is a high tech and a high uh, cost country but it gives you the best armed forces highly trained and have the ability to wage war and defend themselves they've got some of the best possible machinery and ammunition that they have that one can have labor it's highly skilled it is disciplined nineteen um, ninety was perhaps one of the years where there after which they have been very
very few strikes in Singapore's. You know. uh, and if you look at per capita, how about greater than thirty thousand dollars? Now this is nothing shorter than a miracle. And what started as an island without anything, the person Lee Kuan Yew turned it to island of excellence. A country where people are willing to come, where um, western uh, people from uh, western countries don't even mind coming there once and uh, relocating. Remember that while Singapore through is surrounded by Indonesia, by Malaysia, by China, a large one out here, Singapore is much better off than any of these nations when it comes to any of the indicators compared. So how did this happen? It's not easy. It's not easy. How did this happen? You have to think about it. When you think about it, you come to know of a few of the behaviors that Lee Kuan Yew demonstrated as a leader. First was that his determination and will to prove that Singapore can stand out. Next, his understanding. His understanding that what will lead to success to get jobs for people, it wasn't enough for him to go for agri or tourism. He knew that these could generate jobs, but they couldn't. He couldn't be different than other countries. He had to be different than other countries. So he said, while agri and tourism might happen, but for generating jobs, he knew that he has to do high tech. He has to align with the MNCs, and he aligned with the financial revolution which was happening. Third is opportunity sensing. While others were not thinking of going the way of MNCs uh, and inviting MNCs to manufacture in their own country so that they can become high tech and, uh, and, and therefore gain by them. Rick Won Yu understood that opportunity and he went for it. And he also created a financial hub because having become a financial hub, Singapore gained substantially in revenues as well as in uh, income. Next, if you see, it's like the internal issues of zero tolerance towards misgovernance and corruption. And last but not the least is reorganizing people. Now, it's not easy to tell people to change and become much more productive. He has to do skill development. He has to reorient their mindsets. He has to look at uh, how to take the same people who used to be farmers and then grow them over time so that those people can then lead Singapore. There's a limit with through using which uh, using imported labor. You can't just take an expats and try to make a country based on that. It's not possible beyond a limit. So what what were some of these? Uh, now, if if you look at determination and passion to succeed, this is a must in every leader, whether it's in business or it's in uh, political. Now, if you look at Understanding which sectors to contribute from, whether it's high-tech MNCs or do you want to go the agri and tourism way and the uh, low-end manufacturing way. Lee Kuan Yew was very clear that he has to do something different and that something different drove him to go to Harvard and study there and in the process meet the American entrepreneurs and understand. Third is opportunity sensing. Why could he take the leap before any other uh, country like China or uh, uh, Taiwan in that region or South Korea. That's because he sensed the opportunity and he went aggressively for it, much better than others. So opportunity sensing has to be carried out with 
high quality and fast execution of the idea. Zero tolerance towards uh, misgovernance and corruption. Lee Kuan Yew understood that the power was in the people of Singapore and their creative capability. He has to, he cannot squander that by misgovernance and corruption. So if if people see corruption and misgovernance, they will lose faith in the government and the country as such will not be able to succeed then. So he was absolutely zero tolerance towards that. And uh, he did a slew of practices which so many countries even today talk about but can't emulate. And the next was reorganizing their workforce, their people, to this highly skilled, highly capable uh, set of people whom MNCs could trust and do business with. That's not easy. So what we see today, a Singapore which has got, uh, which started off with only agri, what we see today, the revenue sources are of finance, it's a financial hub, there are many companies which are also headquartered out of Singapore and those companies have got laws which favour them, that's why they are headquartered there. It is a hub for manufacturing, high tech. It is a hub for shipping, it's a natural port, that was the biggest benefit that they had and it's a hub for airline and tourism. Now how different are these? If you see the four sectors on which Singaporean economy is now based on, you will see that it's fundamentally different from what it started with. Singaporean economy started with as usual agri. While the neighbours of Singapore were still based on agri and manufacturing of low end, Singapore took this stance and became an island of excellence. People talk about Singapore. People say that Singapore is such a fantastic nation to see. But one must always remember that behind Singapore was a great leader called Lee Kuan Yew. And I see no difference between what Lee Kuan Yew used to do and what anyone who wants to succeed should be doing in his own business or in his own country. One of the big questions is that how did Lee Kuan Yew understand that he should go for high tech? How did he come in contact with MNCs and the financial sector? After stabilizing Singapore for some uh, years, Lee Kuan Yew then went for a course to Harvard. Kennedy School. Now when he went to go for a course at Kennedy School, that's when he met professors who told him to, who guided him to the idea of working with MNCs and creating a manufacturing base which can give a very different feel to the whole country. Remember, while this idea was there, which he implemented, but getting his workforce to reorganize, to deliver to that idea is not a simple thing, which goes to the credit of Lee Kuan Yew totally. And the next was that when he talked to someone in Citibank, in Citigroup and Citibank, they gave him the idea that world was become a financial was becoming a financial uh, having financial continuity. So when the markets closed, as in uh, Europe, uh, European financial market, then uh, the London market, then New York markets, then Chicago, then Japan and after that there was a and, and before it landed up to Dubai the whole 24 hour circle before that there was a big lull so Singapore had the unique chance to become a financial market financial marketplace and a, a hub for financial institutions which again required different kinds of skill and capability so with this idea of con from Citibank uh, Lee Kuan Yew was able to develop Singapore into a financial marketplace, a, a marketplace for financial companies to be in. And so both of these come together, if you look at it, it needed a total reorientation of the skills, capability, the way the nation would be and it had to stand out not as China, Malaysia, India or Indonesia, but it has to serve to the needs of people who will come f for the high tech uh, and uh, for the financial markets, not only from the uh, skills capability level but also from the capability uh, also from the side of stay the kind of security they get all of the aspects so as I always have all said before 
there are three things which are necessary for the success one is of any leader so if you are designing a leadership program for your organization understand that give value to exposure if you don't expose your leaders to the right bit of challenges to the right bit of opportunities they cannot develop next is education the quality of education that you give to your leaders is absolutely critical and the third is expertise and the nature of expertise which is available to the leader to discuss with while he's preparing is very critical remember lee kuan yew got a huge chance to discuss with his professors in kennedy school and also he was in the power to make a de- to make a decision on that that's when true leadership comes up if you don't give exposure education expertise to your leaders they will never be able to develop themselves so understand that political leadership sing- the singapore way teaches so many things and all of these are replicable in the context of any country or in the context of any uh, business now you want to make your business great of course you can can you develop great leadership of course you can provided you have the determination and the passion to succeed like lee kuan yew did you have in you a clear understanding as to what will get the revenues and the money you have the capability sense opportunity grab it and execute it to perfection if you have zero tolerance to issues which drag the organization some things like poor decision making or uh, inability to understand uh, cause and effect uh, from a general managerial perspective and you need to be able to reorg people through new skills new capability maybe you get skills and capability from outside first but later develop it in house now when you put all of these together you get one of the magic of performance and you get the magic of singapore which was an island which was far lesser in per capita income to an island of excellence which whole world today emulates singapore today is the place to study and when you study singapore and when you see singapore remember the one man who made it possible was lee kuan yew